Absalom and Achitophel by John Dryden Characters Summary Analysis Hello and welcome to the discourse Absalom and Achitophel is a political allegory written by John Dryden that comments on the then political scenario of England It is a lengthy poem containing 1031 lines framed in heroic couplets Absalom and Achitophel was first published in 1681 It is a biblical allegory in which Dryden describes the rebellion of Absalom against King David and uses it to explain the political situation concerning King Charles II, his illegitimate son James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, and the Earl of Shaftesbury. The poem also reflects on the popish plot of 1678. The subtitle of Absalom and Achitophel is a poem. This poem best captures the sense of political turmoil particularly regarding religion just after the restoration. Absalom and Achitophel is considered the finest political sat- satire in the English language. In the prologue to the reader, Dryden states that the true end of satire is the amendment of vices by cor- correction. Dryden uses two biblical stories in this poem to depict the happenings of the court during those times. The first story is of Absalom's rebellion against his father King David as told in the Old Testament of the Bible. The second allegory is the parable of the prodigal son from the New Testament of the Bible. The second allegory can be found in the poem beginning on line 425. Major characters David biblically is the king of Israel he represents king Charles II of England Absalom is David's beloved son who rebelled against him he stands for James the duke of Monmouth who sided with the exclusionist against his father Charles II he was executed for treason Achitophel is David's counselor who betrayed him and encouraged Absalom to rebel against his father He hanged himself where when he saw that the rebellion would not succeed. He represents Anthony Ashley Cooper, the first Earl of Shaftesbury, who is David's friend and represents Lawrence Hyde, Earl of Rochester, Charles II's first Lord of the Treasury. He fought against the exclusion bill. David committed adultery with Bathsheba and sent her husband Uriah into battle where he was killed. David let, later married her. Here she stands for Louis de Querol, Duchess of Portsmouth, one of Charles' mistress. Saul was the first king of Israel. He defeated the Philistines in their first battle. He represents Oliver Cromwell, who ruled England after Charles' execution as Lord Protector. Two biblical figures represent Zimri, a murderer in Numbers, and a usurping murderer in 1 Kings. He is an allegory of George Villiers, the second Duke of Buckingham. Korah led a rebellion against Moses. He stands for Titus Oetus, who devised the popish plot and led the persecution of Catholics. Background Biblical background Absalom is the beloved son of King David. He is distinguished by his extraordinary abundant hair, which is thought to symbolize his pride. He decides to rebel against his father King David to acquire ruling power. Achitophel, one of the renowned advisers of King David, decides to side with Absalom. When David comes to know this, he plans with his other adviser Hushai, Hushai plots with David to pretend to defect and give Absalom advice that plays into David's hands. While Hushai acts as a double agent, he succeeds in gaining the trust of Absalom, who takes the advice of Hushai while ignoring the good advice of Achitophel. Achitophel, realizing that the rebellion is doomed to failure, goes home and hangs himself. King David's soldiers defeat the rebels, and despite David's explicit command not to harm Absalom, he is killed after getting caught by his hair in the thick branches of great oak tree. The death of his son Absalom causes David enormous personal grief. The other allegoric story is that of the parable of the prodigal son. It is the tale of a son who asks for his birthright early, loses it and returns to his father, who then takes pity on him and shares with him his remaining future fortune. Historical background. In 1681, King Charles was 51 years old and his health was deteriorating. He had no legitimate heir while he had many illegitimate sons. 
His most beloved and popular bastard child was James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth. He was a Protestant and was supported by Whigs. King Charles II wishes his brother James II to succeed him. While King Charles II was a Protestant, his brother James II was openly a Roman Catholic. Whigs supporters and the majority Protestant population were apprehensive about the possibility of a Roman Catholic king ruling over them. So they devised the exclusion bill that would prevent James from succeeding to the throne. The exclusion bill was presented and advocated by Anthony Ashley Cooper, the first Earl of Septisbury. But this bill was opposed by Tories and was blocked by the House of Lords. In 1681, the Earl of Septisbury appealed to King Charles II to legitimize James Scott, Duke of Monmouth, at the Oxford Parliament. However, the Duke of Monmouth was caught preparing the rebel against King Charles II to seek the throne. The Earl of Septisbury was suspected to fan and support this rebellion. He was seized and charged with high treason. However, he was later acquitted with the help of Vic Sheriffs. After the death of King Charles II, it was definite that James II will succeed him. The Duke of Monmouth couldn't bear it and he decided to revolt. The Monmouth rebellion was put down and in 1685 the duke was executed. Summary King David is the ruler of Israel at a time when polygamy is not a sin. He has many offsprings but he has no legitimate heir from his wife Michal. Absalom is one of his illegitimate sons who is most beloved and popular. Absalom has gained name and fame with his wins in the foreign lands and King David loves him too much and tries to fulfill all his whims. While David is an able leader, Jewish people are capricious and tempestuous and often throw up their ruler for a new one for political gains. Achitophel is a wise and witty counselor of King David. He is desirous with high aspirations and wishes to gain more power. He decides to ruin King David's reign and starts swaying Absalom to his side. As Absalom gradually becomes his political pawn, Achitophel instigates him to revolt. Achitophel compliments and charms Absalom, telling him that it is a shame that his low birth seemingly precludes him from taking the throne. His father's legal successor is Absalom's uncle, a wretched man. Achitophel fills Absalom's head with praise, even though Absalom loves his father. Achitophel's subtle comments about his father's weaknesses begin to affect him. He sees himself as destined for greatness. Meanwhile, King David comes to know about the design of Achitophel and takes Hushai's help to counter Achitophel. Hushai pretends to be against King David and wins the trust of Absalom. He advises Absalom to win the hearts of people. Achitophel begins to work within the populace, fomenting dissent and unrest. Absalom goes before the people and wins their love easily. His popularity and pomp distract him from the plot at hand. Achitophel realizes that Hushai is playing some other game and he tries to warn Absalom. But Absalom ignores Achitophel's advice. Finally, King David speaks, asserting the legitimacy and power in a manner that brooks no refutation or dissension. This secures his enemy's downfall and his own long rule. Dryden makes a satirical comment on Duke of Monmouth, Absalom, and Earl of Sabbatsbury, Achitophel, in lines. Great wits are sure to madness near a lead, and thin partitions do their bounds divide. Absalom and Achitophel gained huge popularity and success. John Dryden was requested to continue the story and write another part. However, Dryden declined such offers. Nahum Tate, Dryden's friend, decided to write the second part of the poem and this second part was published in 1682. In this second part, Dryden anonymously contributed a few lines that satirizes Thomas Shadwell and Alkna Settle, two of his contemporary authors who were named Og and Doeg in Dryden's passages. Now stop your noses, readers, all and some, for here's a turn of midnight work to come off from a treason tavern trolling home, round as a globe and leakered every chink, goodly and great he sails behind his link. These lines of part second of Absalom and Achitophel were written by Dryden as a satirical comment on Thomas Shadwell. So this is it for today. 
we will continue to discuss the history of english literature please stay connected with the discourse thanks and regards